Can I speak to your spirit? I stopped talking about people's struggles on their bad habits, especially when I realize I don't know what people battle with daily. When it comes to dying to your flesh, this can be a very tough thing. Ephesians 4 and 29 says, Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification that may impart grace to hearers. Do y'all hear what that verse is saying? Before you speak on somebody's situation, think about it first. Because you too need the same grace that they need in the season that you're talking about them in. Don't get it confused. Struggling with something is a total difference from making an excuse to satisfy your flesh. However, there is a time when God will call us to be intentional about the things that we do. When the Holy Spirit said that, I was just like, all right, now you're doing your big one. To those of you who may be still struggling, I pray that God gives you a different desire to hunger for the things that are pleasing to him. He will replace those struggles, but God cannot heal what you do not reveal. Ooh. And to those who may still judge people because you don't know their story, I pray that God opens up your heart to be more gentle and to be more patient with people. James 5 and 16 says, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man unveils much. Realize that we are all in the body of Christ. Pray for one another and spread more love. Can I speak to your spirit? This is how God freed me from filling all those voids. I turned my heart back towards Christ again in May of 2023. And he gave me that fire. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. I wanted to know who God was for myself. Not who people told me he was. Not who my old preachers used to preach him to be to me. But I wanted to genuinely, intimately get to know God for myself. And God started to reveal himself more and more. So firstly, I had to become self-aware of the things that were distracting my relationship with him. And then I went deeper. I was like, God, show me why. Show me why I am the way I am. And just like a gift, I started to unfold the wrap of peace by peace. Mind y'all, the whole time I'm having this encounter with God, I'm still doing the things that fill them voids. Having sex, smoking weed, clubbing, settling for bare minimum. Baby, the list goes on. And I kept doing it until God changed my desire for it. Catch it. I had to ask God to give me a different desire to hunger for the things that were pleasing to him. Not to myself, not to this flesh, not to the things that I love in this world, but pleasing to him. Because it is so hard to get to a place where you just want God and only God, no matter what your flesh say, no matter what your say I had to ask God to give me a different desire to hunger for the things that are pleasing to him I started to ask God to reveal remove and replace and in that order baby he did just that one day I just snapped out of it and I stopped giving myself excuses to keep sinking in my sin sin puts a gap in who you know God to be and if I had kept giving myself excuses I would have kept missing the mark I slowly started to forget the word of God. And once I was aware that I was forgetting what God had spoke, I repented. He forgave me. And now I'm back in line spreading the truth of who God is. But it's not about just getting close to God. The goal is to love God more than I love myself. If I can love God more than I love myself, serving him would be so easy. <laughs> serving him would be so much more submissive for me. I. Can I speak to your spirit? When you stop answering to old names, they lose power over you. The obedience is better than the sacrifice. You know why? Let me break it down. Every action has a reaction. If you went and stole a $56,000 car from a lot, number one, you're going to jail. Number two, you're not going to be happy about that at all. And while you're sitting there in jail, you're going to start thinking about what you've done. Everything is about to start replaying back in your head. They give you 20 years or more. And over those 20 years, you start to experience depression in the worst way, anger in the worst way, bitterness in the worst way, all because you made one decision. Catch it. You sacrificed your life for a $56,000 car for whatever reason. And now all these spirits that snuck back in your life and clouded your mind with all these thoughts. Fast forward. Now you get to a point where you just want God to have mercy on you. You just ready for God to set you free. You want God to change your situation around. You're so desperate because you finally became to a breaking point And ultimately you just want to feel whole again. I get it. Just to clear the air, God does discipline his children. Now that you've come to a breaking point, 
you ready for breakthrough. But your obedience in this season to God is much more greater than that sacrifice that you made then. That sacrifice got you thrown in jail. That sacrifice got you feeling all types of ways that God did not intend for you to feel. But because you sacrificed your life just for that car, that's the result that you got. Had you just trusted God to provide, had you opened your mouth and invited God into that season of being carless, God would have gave you something that that car could not give you or could even amount to. Friend, it ain't even worth it. Just trust God. Your obedience is worth more than the sacrifice. Love God because you love him and not because you choose to. I'm gonna say it again. Love God because you love him, not because you choose him. He ain't no choice. He's the way, the truth, and the life. Are you? Can I speak to your spirit? Let's stop popping on the internet to show and tell Christianity for a trend. This is real life. We are in a spiritual warfare and our brothers and sisters are sleeping in it. Sleeping in lies, sleeping in depression, sleeping in anger, sleeping in lust, sleeping in bitterness. Oh, and that's just a few. Declare the good news. God sent his son Jesus to save us. Let the one who has ears hear. Here's what the spirit said. I'm gonna say it again. Let the one who has ears, here's what the spirit says. We gotta start being Christ-like instead of just liking Christ. Your words mean nothing if you are not doing as the spirit tells you. How can you confidently and boldly spread the gospel if you aren't living it yourself? That is why the scriptures tell us to check fruits. Don't just believe everything you see on social media. Be a person of good judgment. When you off camera, who are you? You can hear people talking about the Bible on social media all day long. But once that camera cuts off, they lack faith, self-righteous. They worship idols. Whew. Baby, check them fruits. Matthew 7, 19 through 20 says, you will know them by their fruits. This is straight Bible. I Can I speak to your spirit? How dare you settle for less? Do you know that you were created on purpose, for a purpose? Do you know how valuable and precious you are to God? Well, for my friend who might be out there struggling today, these are a few reminders of who God created you to be. When he formed you, it was because he loved you already. Even before you became flesh, he was calling you then and he's calling you now. He created us to prosper. He created us to fulfill wonderful works for him. Even before the day you took your first breath, he loved you. He called you his own. He called you masterpiece. And because you are his masterpiece, he delights in you. He sees the best of you. He never stops believing in you. But friend, you got to know whose you are to know who you are. Stop downplaying your position. You don't have to settle for less just because you can't get what you want now. And that doesn't mean God doesn't want you to have it. But he wants you to know exactly who you were created by so that you can know the exact power that you have been given. But you can't pass a test if you don't study. And the same way with God, you won't know him if you don't study him. Get to know him. He wants to build your character, your integrity, your intelligence, your faith your obedience so that you can confidently know that if god before you who can be against you nobody no devil in hell on earth can be against you people will misuse and abuse you when you stick to settling i'm gonna say it again people will misuse and abuse you for settling but god allowed them to because you gave them room to and just like he was there then he is still there now waiting on you to pick up that call. Friend, don't keep repeating the same cycle. Don't keep relearning the same lesson. Because one day you might not get to learn that lesson again and it will be too late. Love you.